Greetings. I'm not exactly sure where this video is going to go, but I kind of know how it's going to end. On May 16th, which is four days from today, this idiot, and that's me being nice, who lived in the Binghamton, New York area, not in Binghamton itself, but in the Binghamton, New York area, decided to get in his car, drive all the way to Buffalo, New York, go to the black section of town where they had a Topps supermarket and decided to start shooting people. He ended up killing 10 people, injuring some others before they got him, took him down. The thing is that this guy had written a 180 page manifesto about killing black people and about something that was called replacement therapy, uh, theory, replacement theory. I had never heard of this. I'll tell you the truth, up until probably Tuesday morning, I didn't even know this was a thing. And it turns out that it's something that's always been promoted by this guy who I'm gonna call TC, who's on Fox Spews. I'm refusing to use his name, and there's some other names I'm gonna refuse to use. And as long as I add Spews to it, then I'll use the name of that particular network. It turns out that not only has he said it, a lot recently, but he's been saying it a lot over the last five years. As a matter of fact, the New York Times did this study or this expose on him where they found that he had said it 400 times on his show. And it's the number one pundit show in the country and especially on this network. It also has the fewest advertisers because a lot of advertisers in the United States refuse to be on his show. He's got the pillow guy who still does it, but you know, this guy's about to go bankrupt, so totally forget about him. Now, he's also complained a lot about something that's called critical race theory. And there are certain states in the country that have banned this from being taught in schools. The thing is, it was never taught in schools. Most of these people have no idea what critical race theory is. And I do, I wrote it down, I'm gonna read it so that I get this Correct. Critical race theory states that United States social institutions like the criminal justice system, education system, labor market, housing market, and healthcare system are laced with racism embedded in laws, regulations, rules, and procedures that lead to different outcomes by race. Well, that's true. <laughs> you know, if you don't believe this kind of thing isn't true, you're either living in a community that has almost no minorities whatsoever, or you just care to ignore what really happens. I happen to be black, in case you didn't notice, but I live in an almost totally white community. I'm the only black family on my street, or homeowner, I'll say that. There's a few other homeowners within the entire neighborhood, but in general, I'm it. And I can sit here and tell you that these things actually do happen. Maybe not to me so much where I'm here, but they happen. Educational system. You know, the city of Syracuse has had a lot of problems. Why? Because there's not enough money to help fund the schools. But they still have some kids who end up being very brilliant and go on to good schools. So that happens. The labor market. You know, the highest level of unemployment is black people in the Syracuse area. The housing market. Well, you know, you can easily price a lot of folks of color out of living like where I live in the suburbs. And healthcare, maybe not so much here in New York, but during the pandemic, you heard stories all across the country where hospital personnel were sending minorities home saying, well, we don't think you have it without testing them. And they died in their home. And a lot of the hospitals denied it, or some of them said, well, we didn't know it was this, this, or we were, no, this stuff happens all the time. Housing market, y'all ever heard of redlining? If not, go look that up. Like I said, it's not everybody. It doesn't happen everywhere, but it's more prevalent. And you know who never gets that? White people in general. So critical race theory is a true thing. And when TC got somebody to fuss about him with this, you know, President Biden, Schumer, actually a couple of Republicans even said it. So, you know, Liz Cheney and whatever, they all got on him. You know what he said? You know, this is just the Democrats 
turning this around, trying to blame me for something that it's their fault. And it's all because of wokeism. Let's talk about that one again a bit. Because I decided to go and see what the dictionary definition of that was. I knew what it was, but I wanted to be able to read it off properly. So let's talk about what wokeness is. Wokeness is a state of being aware, especially of social problems such as racism and inequality. And you can have examples, like they talk about wokeness encompasses the need to search for more knowledge, understanding the truth in order to challenge injustice, being fair to others of all races and backgrounds. To me, that sounds like a good thing, but we will say the conservatives, because I'm not gonna say Republicans in general, because I know some Republicans, you know? We may disagree on some political issues, but they're not bad people. But conservatives, super conservatives, this is a problem. And you will have them kind of spout these things and then I will call them out on it specifically. And when they can't answer that, then they start getting insulting or they want to just kind of get racial about it. Which, once again, why are you trying to come at me over race? We already had that discussion. You know what? This thing about... Uh, critical race theory, and the thing about replacement theory, which is basically the idea of we need to hold down minorities and those who are not like the rest of us so that they don't overtake us. Well, 76% of the United States are white folks. <laughs> you know, when are we going to take that over? Yes, there are some studies out there that says the population of the United States by 2030 and I still have this hard to believe, but it's out there, says that by 2030, people who name themselves as white, identify as white, will not be the overall majority anymore. I'm thinking, you know what, that's just not gonna happen. One of the other things about replacement theory, like I said, since I didn't know what this was until Tuesday, this stunned me. Basically, T, C, and L, I are the two biggest proponents of this, saying that, all these people are coming across the border. The Democrats and liberals will say that because you know, that's kind of what I am, are embracing all these folks coming across the border and are going to turn them all into Democrats so that they can vote all Republicans out of office. Well, let's look at that. <laughs> One, you know, this is the country that says we will take your tired, your poor, whatever. It don't want to do that anymore. At least the conservatives don't want that. It's also like this long period of time before someone can actually become an American citizen, which then gives them the right to vote. They have to pass a test. And, you know, it's a federal test. Nobody in this country is trying to bring everybody here. Even liberals will look at some of the borders and say, hey, you know what? We kind of need to protect our borders more. And we know we do. We've got the drugs that are coming in. We got terrorists from other countries who can easily come in. I mean, this is not a hard country to get into. We're very big. And in the areas where most of the borders are, they're like big areas. You can't cover all that. I thought it was pure idiocy when, what's his name? The orange guy, because <laughs> that's what I call him, said, we're going to build a border around the entire United States. That's idiocy. It can't be done. You can try, which they did try. And even the governor of Texas is still looking to build borders around the state. I mean, walls in the... You know what? Before you had walls and you were saying they're just coming across the border, they had tunnels. You can drive through the country. There's a whole lot of paths that folks are able to get in through Canada and through Mexico into the United States. So the idea of we're going to have these borders and do whatever, that doesn't really work unless they're going to try to get in the legitimate way and they're not legitimately able to get into the United States. It's fantasy. So that's just not going to happen. And by the way, if you saw what the re results were in the voting for 2020 for president, when the orange guy got crushed, by the way, it turns out that 
the folks who are labeled either Hispanic or Latino, because you know what, I'm always going to get that wrong. I, I've been trying to get the difference on that for probably 15 years. And depending on who I talk to, the definition keeps changing. So I'll just put them both together. The ones in Florida overwhelmingly voted for the orange guy. The ones in Arizona and New Mexico voted for Biden. And they were all immigrants who became American citizens from the same country. And it didn't go the same way. So how do you make this determination that Biden, Democrats, liberals, or whatever, are trying to get all these people in here so that they can vote for Democrats? Pure idiocy. Now we've got this thing about Roe versus Wade. And it's unbelievable that this is even a thing that people are still talking about and it's gonna get overruled. And most probably, you know, with everything that the conservatives are trying to say, there is a great possibility that we're about to lose Roe versus Wade, which basically means once again, a whole bunch of white people, mainly white people, there's some black people, you know, who say that they believe in the Bible and the Bible says it shouldn't do this kind of thing, which the Bible doesn't say that, but you know, y'all go ahead, have your word. But it's mainly these same conservatives and whatever that are saying, we have to ban abortion. We have to protect our children. We have to make women understand that if you get pregnant, then you just have to deal with the responsibility. You even have some states that are basically saying, and if we find out that you've left the, left the state to go to another state to get an abortion and you come back, we're going to arrest you. What? And there's a couple of states that want to ban contraception. What? <laughs> and some that are saying we want to ban the abortion pill. If we find out that you have mail ordered that and got that here, then we're going to arrest you for that. So in other words, women get raped, incest, or sexually assaulted in any other way, and they get pregnant, it's their fault. It's totally all on you. But we're doing it for your own health. That's a lie. Let's talk about some stuff here. I wrote down some stats. <laughs> and there's a lot of folks who aren't going to like these, but this is just what they are. So what's the worst, worst states in healthcare in this country? Let's take these in order. Alabama is the worst. You got Louisiana, then Arkansas, Mississippi, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Wyoming, West Virginia, Nevada, Missouri, and Florida. Every one of those states is already set up to totally ban abortion or to set up rules that are so strict that a lot of women aren't even going to know they're pregnant until this time period passes. Every single one of those states. So now let's look at the worst states childcare in order. The first one actually shocked me. <laughs> I was totally shocked by this. Um, Texas is the worst state for child care in America. Followed by Georgia, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Arkansas, Alaska, Delaware. I don't know how Delaware got in there. Ohio, North Carolina, and Mississippi. By the way, Florida is 37th. So the states that are banning abortion and are going to make women have these children regardless are not going to protect either the women or the children because they're not set up to do it. They haven't tried to do it. Now, let's look at education. New Mexico is the worst state in the nation for education. Then Nevada then Louisiana, West Virginia, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, 
Arizona, and wait, how'd this happen? Texas. <laughs> Texas, one of the richest states in the nation, is on the top 10 list or the worst 10 list for education. Now, what shocks me is that Florida is actually listed as the third best state in the nation for education. I don't know how that happened, but you know, there you go. These are the criteria. And let's talk about the worst states for women's rights. Louisiana is number one. Mississippi, Arkansas, Alabama, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Idaho, West Virginia, Texas, Georgia, Utah. And Florida's 34th. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with that? I have this list of all these states that either already have laws ready to ban abortion totally if Roe v. Wade is altered or are finding these other ways to do it. But it's just too many states. I don't want to mention all these. What I will say, however, is that every state that's on this list, and there's more states than this, are on the worst side of health care, the worst side of child care, the worst side of education, and the worst side of women's rights. So we have this thing where they're looking to go after Roe v. Wade. Now, this other TC who happens to be a senator from Texas got on some show this week and said, so you got the woke people who are saying that if they ban Roe v. Wade, that they could go after interracial marriage. And that's just a lie. Can't happen. Would never happen. Well, obviously, this horrible senator, the guy who bailed on his state last year when they had a power outage <laughs> and then got caught on it. The same guy who's afraid to stand up to a man who basically insulted his wife and his children and his family and his entire background during election in 2016, who's behind, he's still kissing even though that man is no longer in office. Yeah, <sighs> hate this guy. He seems to have forgotten that three weeks ago, a congressman from one of the middle states, and I don't remember which middle state because I decided I wasn't even gonna go back and look it up, was talking about Roe v. Wade. And he said, well, yes, I tend to believe that there are some of these laws where it should be the states that get to determine how they want these kind of things to go. So Roe v. Wade, you know, abortion rights should be something that the states do. And he was asked by one of the reporters, so then what do you think about interracial marriage, which was set by the Supreme Court? And he said, well, I believe that that should be something that the states make a decision on. The next day, he tried to back that up and said he didn't understand the question. How do you not understand a question when you're asked directly? <laughs> do you think that states should be able to decide if interracial marriage is okay? How do you misunderstand that? He didn't misunderstand that. He knew exactly what he was saying. So he was lying. TC, the senator, is lying. TC, the pundit, is lying. L.I., the pundit, is lying. A lot of conservatives are lying. And they're telling this lie really well. Harry Truman used to talk about Germany after they had been beaten, whatever, and then he's president. And he said what Hitler was great at was what's known as the big lie. You tell a lie so well and so often and with so much vitriol that you can get people who you might have thought had some common sense to believe everything you see without questioning anything. Everything you see, everything you say, you don't question any of that stuff. And you know what's interesting about this as it goes to Fox Spews is that you have their pundits who are saying these things, but you know who's not saying it? They're news people. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was one of the news people last week who had the Oklahoma governor on there talking about how we need to protect 
the women, and yes, we're going to you know, have this abortion, but we're going to totally protect them. And she asked him, well, Governor, how are you going to do this when your state is ranked in the lower 10 for child care? He says, well, but no, I don't believe that stat. Dude, that stat is on multiple, <laughs> it's on multiple uh, state tallies or whatever. You're on a whole bunch of lists. You can deny it all you want to, but this is what your state is. And then she asked him, well, what if it was your daughter who was raped and got pregnant? He said, oh, I wouldn't like that at all. But you know what? I would just support my daughter and help her get through it. Yeah, right. Over the last 20 years, who has been the, okay, let's rephrase that. What are the highest number of politicians, what party, men have been discovered paying for an abortion for someone they weren't married to? I don't have to answer that. Y'all know what that answer is. Heck, at least Edwards, because I can't remember his first name, but this is the guy who was running for president and then all oh, heck broke down with his life. At least he decided that he wasn't going to pay for the abortion, that he would own up to the fact that he was the father for these two women. Two different women. <laughs> He's going to own up to it. Yeah, I did that. He dropped out the race. He was going to take care of his kids. I don't know if that actually happened because I guess he didn't get divorced, had trouble getting a job, had money issues. I don't know. But at least he didn't try to get them to have abortions. Yeah. So here's the thing. Fox Spew's pundits are very good at telling the big lie. They say it all the time, no matter what it is. They tend to decide that, you know, yes, I know what the truth really is, but I need to stick with this because this is what I started. I can't back down. TC the pundit. Y'all remember this guy. Everyone remembers this guy. He supported Russia and Putin all the way until the day that they attacked Ukraine. The night before, he was talking about how great Putin was and how we should be honoring Russia rather than saying some of these things that have been said. I'm sorry. I remember when I was a kid having to get under a desk in school to try to protect myself in case we were bombed by Russia. <laughs> Wasn't going to work, but this is what we did in the 60s. We had to get under desk. Russia has always been the 80, uh, been the enemy. In the 80s, we were ecstatic when the wall came down in Germany and suddenly you didn't have an East Germany and a West Germany anymore, which basically was supported by the Russians, the communists. They have been basically our mortal enemy for, well, since 1945. We haven't trusted communists until this guy got up there. And then a whole bunch of people started all this stuff. There was a white nationalist rally in Florida and they were all cheering for Putin until he invaded the Ukraine. And then even after that, after a couple of weeks, some of them started going back and supporting Putin saying, well, he's going to save those people in Ukraine from anti-Jewish sentiment. Are you kidding? Conservatives have never been supportive of anti-Jewish sentiment. And by the way, the head of the country of Ukraine was Jewish. <sighs> so there's that rant part. Talked about the big lie. Talked about abortion. Here's the thing. They're trying to make it sound like being woke is a bad thing. And I had never really thought much about it. I never thought about whether I was woke or not. I'm definitely liberal. I have my thoughts on a lot of things that are contrary to what a lot of conservatives believe. Matter of fact, almost everything. I have to put it that way. But if I have to call myself woke because I believe that every person in the country, minorities included, deserve to have a fair shot at employment, at housing, 
in healthcare to be treated fairly. Fairly. Healthcare, it should be equally. Housing, fairly. Labor market, fairly. Education, fairly. Justice system, fairly. I have to put it that way because it's not a whole lot of minorities that are in <laughs> uh, positions of authority in all those other areas. Just in a lot of them. And you will hear, well, that's because they're all badly educated. They don't go to good schools. They don't, they can't pass everything. <sighs> yeah. I noticed there's this guy named Thomas Sowell who y'all seem to think is God's gift to equality to give you the right to say, see, if this guy says it's true, then black people must have it right. Yeah. You don't get him, but you can have him. You can have Candace. You can have Herschel Walker. I can't think of some of the others right now. You can have those folks because the overwhelming majority of the rest of us know what that is. I'm not going to call it out right now, but we know what that is. <sighs> but if that's what you're being accused of, if you're being accused because you would like there to be better gun laws, embrace it. Be who you are. If you're one of those people who believes that the LBGTQ community deserves to have equal rights along with everybody else, well, embrace that. You know, I just don't see what the big deal is across the board, across the board. Probably the only thing I kind of agree with conservatives, kind of, is on the death penalty. And I say kind of, because I tend to believe that if someone is so visibly guilty of what they did, that there can be no question as to whether that person did it or not, like this guy in Buffalo, they deserve to have the death penalty. They got to go. That guy should go. Colin Ferguson, not the one who was on SNL, but a guy named Colin Ferguson, who waited on a train until it crossed over into New Jersey, out of New York State, before he killed a whole bunch of people, and then in court, went to one of the people who was a witness against him because he decided he was going to, you know, take care of himself in this. And he said, so when you saw me walk across to someone and put a gun in their face, what did you think? You know, <laughs> that guy deserved the death penalty. Serial killers, especially those who, one, they messed it up. Two, they got witnesses totally against them should get the death penalty because it costs a lot keeping those folks in jail for life for some things. But that's it. I can't think of almost anything else that I agree with conservatives with. Now, someone who may see this video may come and say, well, what do you think about this or whatever? And maybe I'll say, hmm, hadn't thought about that. I don't see that happening. What I do see happening, one, this video is probably not going to get a lot of views unless the title really just drives a lot of people here. Two, a lot of those folks are probably going to attack me personally rather than try to stand up for any of these things that I've just mentioned here. And by the way, if it's a personal attack, I'm just going to block it. <laughs> so if you're going to come at me, come at me with some stats. But... It would be interesting to see what you can find. And for those of you who say, well, black on black crime is just so high that you can't be saying anything about us. Let's look about that. The percentage of black people in this country is about 13%. Overwhelmingly, they're sheltered into areas that are socially, economically depressed. They don't have the same opportunities to get better jobs because they don't have the same opportunities to have a fair and good education. And I know how that works. 
remember, I went to school in a de- in a you know in a ghetto for a year. So don't try to tell me that I have no idea. And some of those kids, I'm assuming, were able to get out of that, but not the overwhelming majority. If you had to grow up with that, then you would understand. But overwhelmingly. And some folks are going to say, oh, but there's poor white people too. Yeah, there are poor white people. But you know what? If one of those folks came out with just a high school education and went to apply for a certain job, and it was between that person or a black person who might have a bachelor's degree, the white person is going to get that job 75% of the time. It's going to happen just that way. Unless the state or the city or the country has diversity laws in place to help protect them. That's what I got. Anyway, I think this is long enough. I want to know what y'all think. Keep it nice. As nice as you can. And that's for the folks who even agree with me. Keep it nice as you can. You know, this page or this site doesn't accept any cussing. And YouTube's going to block that. So I'm never even going to see it. So I'm not going to notice you left a comment. (laughs) But let's be fair. Let's be better to each other as a group. But don't take any mess from someone who decides to get in your face. No Karens. No Bubba's. You don't have to take that from any of those folks. And by the way, for these people who are saying, well, we should have freedom of speech and we should have our freedom of rights. One, you say you want freedom of speech, but the governor in Florida penalized Disney for exhibiting their freedom of speech. So that's a lie. And freedom of choice. I can't believe how many videos I have seen. Short videos. A lot of them when I was still on Twitter, by the way. And some that Instagram has finally decided, okay, we're going to stop showing those. So I haven't seen those in a while there. But when I was Twitter, I've seen them all the time. Where a whole bunch of Bubba's, a few Karens, but mainly Bubba's, came out and said, I believe everyone should have the right to do whatever they want to, to protect themselves, except women and abortion. That should be totally illegal. Well, so much for that. (laughs) You don't get to pick and choose those kinds of things. You're either for something all the way or you're not. Hmm. That's my thought. Y'all let me know what you think. Peace. Relax. See, I I was looking at the camera. I always forget. Y'all take care.